You are listening to the Mark Guzman Podcast Experience. Um, so we have our own spice rub and set up. I used to bring the stuff home from Canada all the time for friends. They'd be like, man, Lex, gotta hook me up with some that Montreal meat, bro. Here's 50 bucks. Go get me some that Montreal meat. So I go and do it and wasn't an issue because you clear customs in Canada. You hear, you clear U.S. customs in Canada as opposed to when you're coming from another country and you've got to come, you land in the U.S. and then you go clear customs in Canada because of the closeness and proximity and just the fact that, you know, we're each other's biggest trading partners, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, customs is cleared in Canada. So all of the agents, the U.S. customs agents, live in Canada, whatever city they're in. Mm. So if they're in Toronto, they're in Toronto. <clears throat> if they're in Montreal, they're in Montreal. So the Montreal guys all know Montreal smoked meat, and they're like, yeah, of course, yeah, oh, yeah, no problem. Bring it in, bring it in. And then there was a mad cow scare in, like, the mid-late 2000s. And uh, I got busted, man. I brought some meat in. I wasn't trying to hide it. I had it just on my cart walking in. The customer said, nope, can't bring that in anymore. And so that was kind of the impetus to find a recipe, start messing with it myself. And, uh, yeah, that's how kind of all your own. More. Yeah, we started doing our own. And, um, again, 11-day process from raw brisket to finished product. You got to you got to we use a, we used a salt cure to essentially draw out all the liquid from the brisket which allows all the spices and our spice mix and our cure to then soak into the brisket then you got to so, then you got to soak out all the salt out of that um, otherwise it would just be a salty mess so that's 4 hours changing the water every half an hour so it was very labor intensive um, but it came out well so we were doing that for a while uh, brought it over to uh, Beauty's Bagel Shop, who does a Montreal-style bagel. They're over at 38th and Telegraph. Shout out Beauty's Bagel Shop, Blake and Amy. Love them, good people. Um, and I said, you know, just give this a try, dude, because, like, I don't know you, and I don't want to, you know, your mom and your family's always going to be like, oh, man, it's great, it's phenomenal, it's really good. You can't trust that. So <laughs> let's get, like, an unbiased, let's get an unbiased neutral opinion. And he was like, man, this is really good. And as a matter of fact, I'm doing these Montreal bagels, and I have customers who are coming in like, hey, you ever going to do Montreal smoke meat? And I don't know how to do it. Why don't you come do some pop-ups here? So uh, we popped up, and for those who don't know what pop-up is, essentially a restaurant will allow you to use their kitchen, uh, which comes along with their with their health uh, health certificate, and you can sell food to the public and kind of try stuff out. So a lot of people are doing that now, which is pretty cool because mm -hmm. you can see if there's a market for your product before you go ahead and sink you know huge amounts of dough in. So yeah. let us do that. Thing went crazy. We're selling like you know I could do up to like 200 pounds at one go myself. We I mean, sell like 200 pounds in like an hour. Like people are just coming in, getting all wow. these great reviews. Things were going really well, um, and so we did that for a bunch. You know, we did that for a couple of years. I was still working. I used to work over at Comcast Sportsnet, and uh, eventually had some investors who approached me and said, "Hey man, we got some money. You wanna whenever you're ready to make this real, let's do it." And so that's kind of how it was born. Um, now we've got a co-packer, uh, who's a producer who makes the meat for us to our specs. Uh, and he uses science to basically cut down that, that 11 day curing time. Cause when I started doing the math, you're a businessman, you know, you've yeah. got to do your math of what it's going to cost you and how much money you can make off of it. Each brisket or each sandwich was going to have to just to break even was going to be about 30 bucks because you got to pay somebody to do all that labor. Mm -hmm. Um, and in the Bay Area, you know, uh, labor's high, and we're, we're trying to pay a decent wage at Augie's. It was always something that I was big on. So I was like, man, I'm going to have to charge like 30 bucks for a sandwich just to break even. And this is not, that's not, even in the Bay Area. Yeah. Even in the Bay Area. That'd be a tough sell. Yeah, dude. And, I'm, you know, I'm Jewish. My Jewish guilt would get to me if I feel like I'm ripping people off. Don't want to be doing that. Uh, so we got this co-packer who can now do it for us. He's got a vacuum tumbler, it's called, and it's basically like a big cement mixer. And it does the same process we do, except under an extreme vacuum. Um, and so it essentially just, like, pushes the cure and our spices in through the meat in 48 hours as opposed to the nine days that we have. Wow. And he can do it to scale. As me doing 200 pounds at a time or 400 pounds at a time, he can do it uh, one to 5,000 pounds at a time. So that's what we're doing now. So he's up in Reading. So, so the cost meats. of a sandwich went from $30 to, what is uh, it? 1425 right now is what we're charging. Um, so they bring it down to us now which is also our pricing is we priced everything versus the other delis in the area um partly because we thought it'd be a good business move and mainly because the tradition of a jewish deli is not fancy people's food this is working people's food um 
And I want to respect that, you know? Like, mm-hmm. there's something about respecting. Thank you for listening to this podcast short. For more podcast content, be sure to subscribe to all of our podcast channels on YouTube, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Libsyn, CastBox, Podbean, and literally anywhere else you listen to podcasts.